Hey guys, let's do mission seven of the crew campaign. So our situation here, I'm gonna actually read this one. April 7th, 2016, uh, the Bolshevik island, uh, the Bolshevik is land, <laughs> was way bigger than Dmitry expected. There are two big stations, Solnechnaya and Chelyabinsk, with a population of more than a thousand people. The radio navigation system is old and outdated, but according to Sergei, the flight engineer, it's a reliable one. The endless snowy and icy open spaces, the gloomy faces of the professional shift workers made Tarasov feel a bit tired. But generally, we can cope with it. And we have work. As Portnov said, the main thing is to sleep and eat on time, and with a few other things, we can get by. Dmitri knew his VIP passenger Safronov very well. He understood that Sergei Viktorovich wouldn't abandon his pilots, and as soon as he gets the chance, he will recall them. And then they're off to Moscow. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, hard frost and sunshine, a day of pleasure, Portnov said in commanding voice, as if he refreshed himself. The pilots wandered through the blinding and creaking snow to their helicopter. Another working day has begun. All right, so our task is to perform an en route flight, initial load of 15 passengers. Uh, we have an average en route speed of 190 kph again, average flight time one hour. So our objective down here, we're gonna take off from Solnechnaya. Um, hopefully I'm actually pronouncing these somewhat correctly. Uh, HP Yacht Kritka um, with an NDB. That's where we are now. Landing at Smotravaya Heliport, um, which means lookout. And again, I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat right. It's got a no NDB for this one, so we have to make our way down to this first heliport here without the aid of NDB. So I'm assuming we're going to be relying on our Doppler nav for that one. Uh, then we're headed out to CDNG2 Helipad Vietka. Uh, 128, that's got an NDB. And then finally, back to where we started. Um, based on this picture here, in our briefing image, it looks like we're gonna be landing on an oil rig again, which is cool. And there we go, there's our flight plan. So here's where we're starting, Solnechnaya. And then we'll be heading south down to Smotravaya. Heliport, which doesn't have NDV, and right next to it is a blasting operations zone. So I guess I have to be basically right on the course line, because if I drift off of it, I could end up getting blown up. That's interesting. And then we're headed out to HP Vietka, which is that oil rig out here in the water, and then we'll head back. All right, cool. I'm going to grab a screenshot of that so that I can pull that up on the other screen. And let's get started. The pre flight check is complete. Flight manuals on board, checked. Latches, doors, hatches. Altimeters are checked. Pressure and altimeter adjustments as per charts are checked. Fuel load, 1,100 kilos. Total payload, 1,510 kilos. Takeoff weight, 11,596 kilos. En route fuel reserve is taken into account and included in the total fuel load. Onboard Shuttle consisting of eight people. In addition, there's also a group of seven geological engineers. The leader of this mission is Sergei Lavkov, the head of engineering services, UDNG. April 7th, 2016, Solnitsky Station. Crew reports are confirmed, pre-flight check is done. The airport's frequency is 126 megahertz. Flight engineer, start up. Start up. Commander. Before setting the up-correction lever, warm the oil in the main gearbox and engines. Alright, let's request startup. I actually don't have any comments to make before we get going. 40. 40. That's, uh, that's cold. Guys, the first turning point is Motrovaya. As you already know, landing at this heliport is quite critical. I'll figure it out. Открытка. Вы 
845. I'm going to need to actually power that on before I can request startup. Also on the wrong channel. There we go. that window if it's, you know, minus 40. It's not actually. It's minus 12, 14. That'd be cool if you actually could get the mission editor to do minus 40. then so it looks like we're actually flying into the blast zone that's interesting and it looks like I might also have to maintain like do a proper startup what about arc 9 I'm figuring it out Sanch setting it now 705 kilohertz for Solchnaya station OGPD2 is on 725 kilohertz Motrovaya NDB is out of service. Heading is 192 degrees, including magnetic variation. Distance of Motrovaya is 23.9 kilometers. All right, so we've got our first, our initial waypoint and waypoint two on NDB, um, but we don't have waypoint one on NDB because it's out of service. But we can enter that into our Doppler. We have the distance, we have a heading. Uh, I did take screenshots of them. All right. I'm wondering if they're gonna make me wait until temperature comes up or wait a certain amount of time before I'm allowed to throttle up. Doesn't seem like it. We're just going to go ahead and uh, bring our throttle up now. These temperatures, as far as, you know, my instruments are reading, they're up. They're good. All right, let's do it. Takeoff heading 035, ready for takeoff. Andre, check if system heat is on, please. Ready for takeoff. Ready. We're not ready. We're not ready even close. Ready. ready for takeoff. Ready. Zero three five into the wind, I guess. 
do that. Alright, start turning on some stuff now. We're going to run it a little warmer. If it's actually that cold, we're going to want it warm. You know what minus 40 feels like. It's unpleasant. <laughs> Get our lights on. Definitely our pedo heating. Clock and battery heating. Alright, that about does it for that. Um, radar altimeter. Center channel autopilot. Radio's tuned. Now we need to jump over here and enter in our heading and distance. Bring that up on my other screen. All right, so we're going 23.9 kilometers. So we'll roll this aft to 23.9, let it count back up to zero. Oh, wow, look at that. That's right on. <laughs> that never happens. And then our heading is uh, 192, if I'm not mistaken. Technically faster to roll backwards. 192. All right, on. There, and we're going to be flying from this seat again um, because we need our Doppler nav, and that's not available over there. What I will do, though, is uh, get myself pointed for takeoff, and we're going to set this to about 10 meters. A little warning. Maybe we'll do five, so we have a little bit of warning. Yeah. All right, that'll work. So let's first of all get ourselves turned. Um, you know what? I need to turn the Arc 9 on, even if we're not going to be using it yet. Make sure that both work. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's get ourselves turned. Takeoff direction is here. Trim for takeoff. There. Release the brake. Hop back over here so we have our nav. And we're basically going to be turning right around and heading out that way. Alright, bring in some collective. And we're up drifting a little. Man, like it's... This is accurate. <laughs> Everything just sort of blends together. see a horizon basically at all. So IFR. <laughs> Commander, standby frequency is one hundred and thirty megahertz. Call sign Ogrinka control. We're on it. Yeah, yeah. 
Tell me, how many people work on this island? More than 2,500 people, including those on the ground floor. I never thought that people would begin developing, mining, and exploiting natural resources on the Arctic so quickly. Well, after the conflict with NATO in 2009, a better political and economic situation evolved. In 2010, the other funding for the Arctic began. We can see the results now. So, you guys are from the past? Right from the epicenter of all that? What did you do in the war? Well, I didn't really fight. We were sent from school to Sukhumi to a military base. And I served as a technician there. But Dima here was awarded a medal. Wow. So why don't you do the second medal, Commander? For the battle of Shigen, Billy. You won in 2008? No, in January of 2009. After the beginning of the full blown conflict with Georgia. Okay. I feel like I've forgotten how to fly right now. Dangerously close to that little hill. Anyway, we're kind of figuring it out. We're still a little left of course. Fairly short leg. Ground wind 35, gusts up to 6 meters per second, visibility 6 kilometers, teleport is clear. Well, that's not so bad. Little windy. Gusts from up, yeah, weather confirmed, inbound for landing. Roger. Commander, this is Lavkov. On the left is where the explosives are set. The three observation towers are a useful landmark. What? Well, we will blast there. After landing, we are heading to the towers. Oh, way over there. Okay. Oh, this is cool. It's like an ice shelf. Alright, I need to slow way the heck down here, because, uh, yeah. It's okay, we need to land the other way anyway, so I'm going to go out and go past it. And then it looks like we're landing, oh, we're landing right at the very end. <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Just a little bit. Turn around and come back in. Alright, then we'll make our turn. Dropping collective here because I really want to descend a bit. That's a little better. All right, so here's our landing heading. Just need to come down. Man, I can't see a thing. It's nuts. Need sunglasses. Like, seriously. I'm going way too fast. We're going to have to go around. Seriously, I, like I can't see a thing, it all just blends together until I'm super close. That's crazy. Accurate. Alright, keep an eye on speed. I'm climbing again. Alright, that's better. Now I can actually see. I almost need to approach this way and then turn at the end so that I have the water behind my landing site. Something a little bit darker for contrast. Alright, let's get slower. Definitely not going to score 100 on this one for my faffing about as I try to figure out how to land again. Alright, so I'm transitioning out of ETL really early. But I can't tell exactly where the ground is without any kind of definition or contrast. I have very limited depth perception here. in the right spot. Dima, this is Lavkov speaking. You need to fly around those three towers which are to the east of the observation deck on the shore. Climb to at least 200 meters. The geologists throw this back. And then we can immediately fly to the platform. Okay. Roger. We'll execute a circuit, turning left over the landmark. The three towers to the longshore. Okay. Then we're clear for takeoff. Okay, 337 for 24.6.
Okay, we're totally ready, even though I haven't actually entered anything yet. So let's go and do that. Just throw my brake on. We are going 337 for 24.6. So, and that was like right on again. For some reason, I'm always impressed by that. I shouldn't be. But I'm getting accurate directions, I guess. 24.6 and 337. Five, six, and seven. All right, so there's that laid in. Don't forget to zero this out so we aren't starting with some drift built in. All right, there we go, and I should put in that heading. Three, three, seven, thereabouts. And we'll flip our arc nine here. And this should take us to, yes, that should line up nicely. That will take us to our uh, thing. <laughs> Can't think right now. Oil platform. All right. Reset trim. Set trim for takeoff. There. All right. Release the brake and let's go. We're going to go around that flag just a little bit. All right, we're up. Clear, clear, clear. <laughs> we're going to follow the coast. We need to climb to 200 meters. At least, so you know what I'm going to do, so I don't... Uh, don't show up too low, I'm going to do a little circle around. Now we're actually already at 200 pressure altimeter. go. We can stop climbing now. Okay, now we head out over here and look for... Oh, just blinding. I really do need sunglasses. <laughs> I'm surprised that isn't like an actual thing you can do. Put down a sun visor. Because man, we could sure use it. Alright, we need to come down a little. I wonder if they want pressure or radar. Well, we're going to go with pressure at least 200 and... Yeah, around here is good. I kind of wish I would have uh, gotten into this view ahead of time for that. Hey, Dimitri, this is Lavkov. That was great. Take us to the platform, please. Cool. After that, heading to the platform. Barely got to see any of this. All happened right underneath me. All right, off to the platform we go, then. We 
drifted right four kilometers. And by that, I mean we flew four kilometers right. So we're going to come left as part of our course. Alright, so because we have the NDB this time, a non-directional beacon, and we've tuned to it with our Arc-9, we can basically just chase the beacon. Andre, when we arrive, you must remember the location of the platform. Roger, Commander. There are four oil and gas production platforms oh. on the site. Oh. Oh, that's fun. Four platforms, each equipped with its own heliport, their own NDB, and their own call sign. For the most part, we usually contact the road to two platforms, call sign Tesca on 128 megahertz. There's always an air traffic controller on the and main heliport. 128 main heliport. Alright, should I be tuning to 128? As usual, I tend to forget about that. So with just uh, five kilometers to go, Kind of chasing the needle. We Commander, are right on course. Is 128. Mega. 128. The is equipped with a control tower and an ATC. Can I contact them? 128. I just did that. There they are, emerging from the ice fog. Okay, well I'm just following the beacon then. Otherwise, I don't know which one I'm supposed to land at. They didn't really tell me. Is it the front one here? I guess we're going to find out as we fly by and see what the needle does, hey? Looks like it's over here. I'm going to 
grab a screenshot while we're in here. All right, it does seem to be this one. Zero four zero. Vertical landing from hover out of ground effect. Zero four zero. Okay, we can do that. Ready. Ready for landing. Ready. Ready for landing. Ready. Kind of riding the edge of effective translation to lift, getting a lot of buffeting from transverse flow that I don't want. But I know I didn't plan my landing very well, so hey, we're slowed down. There we go. Now we'll come down. Oh, hey, look at that. That's a first. Never managed to land right in the middle. structures that you don't really see much in DCS. I'm glad we're landing on them. Makes you also realize just how big this helicopter is. Like, <laughs> look at that. Either the scale of this tower here is wrong, or the helicopter is big. <laughs> I mean, why not both, right? Okay. Throw my brake on, reset my trim. Pull up the screenshot that I took of our next coordinates. 087 for 14 and a half. All right, we can enter that. It's definitely not quite as quick as just punching in 087 enter in like the Hornet or something. That's for sure. Not that I mind. All right, we're gonna swap our beacon here back to home. And then we'll set our course select as well to 087. Okay, that's about it for that. All right, we'll trim for takeoff. Somewhere around there. Release the brake. Bring in some collective. Up we go. That's a cool takeoff perspective. Staring down at the boat below. Almost on course already. That's nice. Okay, here we go. Andre, this is the radio frequency to 126.0, please. We will monitor 130. I don't see a reason to do so. One two six it is.
I suppose technically I should be switching that to see when I'm over the water. really haven't looked into it enough. My understanding is that the Doppler has to read a little bit differently over water compared to over land. Just chase the beacon now. I'm gonna trim here. Cool. Now we are probably way too high. Oh yeah. We've got to come down. On three to control, Romeo Alpha 22845 on approach with two passengers and crew on board. Please advise current air pressure and weather conditions. God, I forgot to actually request takeoff before I left. So now my option is request takeoff. Request mm. Okay. Um, arrival parking. Alright, sure. Let's just go set down then. That, I was hoping to do just a smooth transition right down to the ground there, but with the ATC thing. Let's move ahead a little bit. Ugh, that was a little bit not so nice. Landing. All right. Well, we're down. How'd we do? Set left correction lever. Run up engines for five minutes. Flight engineer, shut down engines. Passengers remain seated. Roger. 
Excellent. All right. That's great. I thought for sure we weren't going to do very well because of having to go around a bunch of times that first waypoint. That's great. Okay, um, then let's do our shutdown. Throw my brake on, reset my trim. Jump into the middle seat, and we begin by turning off everything that... We need generators for. Autopilot off, radar out off, Doppler off. Okay. There, and then this gets to go off. There. Anti-icing comes off. Everything on our triangle panels comes off. I also forgot to turn off my APU. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm flying too early in the morning when. Okay. So that's everything that we needed our generators for. So now we can turn off said generators. And we can throttle down. Okay. I'm not planning on waiting five minutes for everything to cool down. So now we can do that. Engine RPM is down. I'm not going to wait until rotor RPM reaches 15. I'm just going to throw the brake. Alright. Now that they stopped, we can shut off fuel and everything. And then all of our circuit breakers. Inverters and batteries. That's it. We're done. Alright, well that was fun. I enjoyed that. I'll see you guys next time.